So thank you so much for letting me have the opportunity to look at your chart today. And I want to share with you the main things that have come forward as I got permission from your higher self to look at your sacred records. I was really guided to very specific things in here and just to know that as we evolve through our lifetimes and especially even in this lifetime, I will say that for you because your chart has so many powerful, significant things that are really signifying that you came here to be such a gift for humanity and that in a very short time of you choosing to even incarnate on earth, you took on a lot in order to really heal a lot within, I would say earth, but more predominantly that the main thing that your soul record shows is that you came to heal many, many star systems and what I would call the blueprint of the universe. So you came to really be here, not just for a particular race, but for many races, many planetary and star systems, and primarily what I would even say are healing stargates throughout the universe. So um, if you have any questions at all about anything as I'm, as I'm sharing any of it, just let me know. And I will also ask you some questions because I want to make sure I'm on track for you. Perfect. Perfect. So with this, this is a unique type of reading in which we get to look more at your soul's journey. What your soul was choosing as far as starting to incarnate into separate forms, so to speak. So what your soul's intention would be from its first inception out of the God Source realms. And as I looked at your charts, you have significant connections to the galactic center. You have seven connections to the galactic center and it's conjunct your MC, which is your path, your career house, if you will, in this life. And I really want to be able to share with you that it is so tied in within your charts that it showed me that there wasn't a single moment in your choosing to be a part of physical reality that you ever separated yourself from your source field. So when I look at your chart of origin, that your soul originally birthed from the galactic center, it's connected not only to your Pluto, your MC, your AC, which is your rising sign. So it's basically your soul sign in this lifetime. It's also connected to your moon, your Venus, your Saturn, and your vertex, which is the people that you would communicate or connect with in this lifetime. So you're so aligned with the galactic center in this lifetime that I would say that it's constantly uh, something that just feels as is, as if it's just part of you. Would yeah. you say that's correct? Oh, yeah. Yes. Now, from the galactic center, you originated with a rainbow frequency that you emanated and chose to come into incarnations with the signature of what is called a blueprinter. And when I went in and really asked your soul to describe blueprinter, that blueprinters really are ultra terrestrial beings who choose to incarnate into physical forms in order to fine tune some of the structures or the components is what you were showing me, what your soul was showing. That as a blueprinter, what your soul was showing is that you had direct influence on the creation of this 15 dimensional time matrix, that you were very aware of the incarnating beings that were in, but more so that your sole purpose wasn't so much about the beings in the universe as it was about the stargates, the health and vitality of the living eminence of the beingness of the universe. So think of the universe as its own entity or being. That your purpose was more geared towards that greater body 
of the universe, making sure that the energy was flowing through the planetary systems as if it was flowing through organs and veins and, and different bodies. And if you look at the health of the universe, that when you chose to come in, there was almost a, a predominant energy of, uh-oh, <laughs> something's not working in the universe and I need to go in and fix it. I need to go I, in. I still have that conversation. <laughs> Something, something's not right here. So from the galactic center, the first place that you chose to come into physical form and incarnate was in the Andromeda system, in the Andromeda constellation. And it was showing that you were incarnating there for about 4 million years of time that you stayed within a very high vibrational uh i would say physicality but you weren't really physical that you incarnated into that andromedan constellation in the form of an avian being but when i asked about what form you took you kept showing very much a light body that you were still kind of in ethereal form you were at ninth dimension when you were there because you felt that that was a intermediary enough dimension that you could interact with the physical beings within the universe so more like on a council level but at the same time still kind of keep one foot in the galactic center <laughs> like there was there's always been a part of you through all your incarnations that you don't want to lose your string and that telephone line back home right. so to speak so in the avian form, you were there for about three body incarnations. You were there for about four million years, but in that time, uh, you went kind of back and forth from the ethereal realm of being within an avian body, an avian kind of light body, and then you would kind of go out of incarnation for a little bit and come back in. As you were really uh, working, you've always worked with councils your entire time. You do not work alone. There is nothing in your chart that has ever shown that you kind of went at it alone. You've always had teams that were working with you and uh, interacting not only with the what we will call the ultra terrestrials or the meta terrestrials, which are the consciousness gestalts that are luminary bodies that would be like planetary consciousness or the, the God source realm beings beyond this universe if you would or the ones that are a part the cedars the blueprinters and the creators of this universe so you've always kept kind of a, a direct communication with those within the avian form now from that place there was a moment when you decided to take on a different form so after that amount of time you moved more predominantly into the orion constellation now there's a lot of planets within the orion constellation and in your chart you are connected to the orion constellation by nine different planetary bodies so it is the second it is actually your has the most connections for you because you've spent the most amount of physical time there uh outside of the galactic center so the galactic center was seven connections with your chart which is major <laughs> and then the orion constellation had nine and most specifically many of them are connected directly to the orion nebula and i want to talk about how absolutely special that is so you moved into a form into the orion constellation there and you spent seven incarnations there let me just get the no wonder I'm tired. <laughs> you spent seven lifetime cycles. So I'll call them lifetime cycles because a lot of them were a bit longer than what our human life would be here on Earth. Some of the, the forms that you took there had uh, just cycles that could live hundreds of years or even up to thousands of years there. So they were not as long as the time you spent as an avian light body form. That was the primary amount of time you spent at all in creation has been in a light body form so 
that's probably why your body doesn't always like all the physicality sometimes it's like it's more used to being flighty floaty moving <laughs> so you had seven incarnations or life cycles within orion you went everywhere from uh i kind of had the order here that's starting more in the nebula so you went from that andromeda sen center or the constellation into the Orion Nebula. Now the Nebula is a really special place in many teachings on the planet and in many of the different races and species across the universe. The Orion Nebula is considered a cosmic doorway to the inf to the infinite or the creator realm of God's source. So it's really what I would like to kind of tie in for you is the heart of the universe is the Orion Nebula. And mm -hmm. if you were to look at it, this uh, picture here isn't super great, but it looks like a huge beating heart in our universe. It is connected to the eighth stargate. If you were to look at the uh, tree of life of our universe. Well, you'll notice that every time that we leave our body and, and go do work, where do I go? I go right to the heart and, and I get the heart I, I do healing work on the heart. So I've always been drawn to that. And I've always been drawn to the, uh, the Orion uh, uh, constellations too as well. And when someone will, would say something negative, well, that's where, you know, all the, the negative energy comes from and all that. It's like, it never, it never rang true for me. Mm -hmm. it, it never, it was like, no, that's kind of like home. Um, um, and, and, and uh, you know, people, paint this broad stroke uh, of they think that since they heard something about something it's there's so many different particles in those realms that the broad stroke doesn't work mm -hmm. if that makes sense that's so amazing um absolutely like orion is one of those probably one of the most diverse places because it holds such a polarity there yep such incredibly high vibrational beings and it's funny because it's actually considered one of the places that is so high vibrational and has such kind of an elixir of life if you will that that's why so many diverse species have been drawn to that particular area there's a reason why it, it's a it's they a, were drawn there it's, it's a higher state of it's a higher state of learning if that makes sense there's, there's not another way of explaining it. It's, it's where you go to take on extreme challenges. Mm -hmm. Like, um, it's, it's, I don't want to call it superhero training, but it's kind of like that. Yeah. It's like uh, an academy for, uh, let's, let's shift and change things. Yeah. And we're going to give you some tools. So the cool thing about the majority of your time that you spent in Orion, you spent it more uh, still in a higher vibrational body. You didn't choose to step down that far. So you were in ninth dimensional vibration and frequency. So basically a light body within the Andromeda system in the avian form. And when you went into the Orion system, you only stepped down to eighth dimension. So you were holding a physicality mm -hmm. to you, but this time you, um, I was, uh, your soul was showing me that you were holding angelic energy, but it was, it was actually more in an amphibian like body. <laughs> so kind of, uh, an aquatic or a, um, it just makes me think of fish because you have so much Pisces on here, but there was a very high energy to that. Now, if you were to ever look at uh, some of the some of the energy that's come through through Anton Parks and stuff, he talks about the amphibian races and they were the very high vibrational, many of them high vibrational beings that were considered the Charisti or the Christ consciousness beings that were, um, they were considered like the, uh, the planners or the beings that were helping blueprint the universe. So still at that dimension, you were still very much involved fully and completely with maintaining. So you step down to have a different seat and position in the universe to 
work with the ley lines, work with the energy centers. Again, it was most predominantly with uh, maintaining the stargate systems because the stargates are kind of like the chakra centers or the, or the portals that connect planet to planet and, and constellation to constellation. So there's health and vitality again flowing through the universe. You were working on the Council of Nine. When I asked who you were connected with, there in the Orion system, you were one of the Council of Nine. Now, the Council of Nine, over time, you know, it's it's not like there's these nine people and that's all there are, right. but it's, it's yeah. who they were. And they are considered more the Council of Five now, just because of a lot of the things that are shifting and changing within the universe. But at the time that you were there, you were affiliated with the Council of Nine, which was, again, very much really working about when I asked what your core purpose for incarnating in it was to restore the body of the 15 dimensional time matrix. So to restore this entire universe. So as that you were basically choosing to be one of the guardians of the gates by sitting on the council. And each time you would incarnate into a body, you were incarnating into kind of different systems within the Orion area, but you were connected. What you were showing me is that you were connected to all the other many many other races and other constellations other planetary systems you were very much affiliated with the um the galactic federation of worlds and that was something that you kind of kept in line with now when i if i was to show you your chart you're going to see just a lot of colors here but each of these colors is signifying a specific group that you are more predominantly connected to, working in harmony with. And many of these were beings that were seated in places that had a lot of resistance or conflict. So, for instance, you have uh, huge connections here, specifically even with your son, with Alcyon in the Pleiades, Tigeta. So we're talking about a lot of the uh, races from Orion that did go to the Pleiades system. So there was still uh, really a lot of work that was being done to bring these systems, bring cultures back into service to others, really working out of the negativity traits of many of the Sikar reptilian races and the dominance of some of the 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 more darker gray factions that were working through the Orion mm -hmm. the Orion constellation and so a lot of these places uh had what you would call resistance groups or groups that would connect with the um the the galactic world or the galactic federation of worlds there's there's a lot of different ones out there but for the most part your affiliation was working with beings who were in the trenches, who were working to bring the code of honor back to the universe, if you could put it that way. That would, they were working to bring things back into the law of one, if you will, or honoring each other. So going out of the service itself, going out of raping and pillaging and blowing up planets and and mining them till there was nothing left and overtaking races because this is really what a lot was going on across the universe is a lot of these uh, very stronghold forces from some of the Orion systems and from some of the planets out there they were going and just overtaking yeah you know, I think we see that kind of on Earth, how that happened a lot with, I mean, not to throw the British under the bus, but it's just kind of that idea of like, you know, it's like, oh, well, we're going to sail the seas and wherever we land, I'm going to plant my flag <laughs> and then it's mine. <laughs> yeah, it's it's mine. Yeah. yeah so it's, it's not a steward of that. It's mine. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you can think that even though uh, the... Britain and 
that whole area is actually quite small compared to the planet, but if you look at their influence across the world, it's major. So a lot of these warring factions, that was kind of what was going on. So you, again, were in the Orion system, but you were working with the Council of Nine at an eighth dimensional level. So you were still crystalline in color. You were uh, holding a form that still had the ability to really interconnect with the higher dimensional realms. But as you spent time in Orion, you started to really get more and more pulled into the drama of the universe. Now, your incarnations kind of went from the nebula, Rigel. You spent time kind of going back between Bellaquis and Bellatrix. And from the seventh incarnation in Orion, you chose to have an incarnation on Earth. Now, your first incarnation on Earth was 4,002 years ago. So this was an incarnation that you came in as a female body. This particular female was not what you would think is really humanoid if you saw her today, but she was. She was actually born from a womb, so she was not cloned or um, created in that way. And she was vibrating at the fifth dimensional frequency. So she was not at the third dimension of Earth. She was fully aware. She was born in this realm, but her teachings, so if I could just kind of share the lifetime, how it was, um, as your soul showed it to me, was that this girl was born to a very prominent royal family. And this family had access to uh, coming and going off of planet Earth on starships. This planet was based in India, and the skin color was blue. So the parents uh, were rulers, and you as a female in that life eventually grew up to be like a ruling class and a matriarchal kind of being and the family was very benevolent uh had actually come from the orion system but not so much to do anything but more kind of like um i don't want to use the word missionary but more to kind of come and do goodwill an ambassador it was okay yeah. yeah so the family came so as a child you were raised fully with compassion for humanity and the people here but also at the same time fully aware of your home planet your home system if you will uh and all of kind of what had been going on and actually having access so i asked in that lifetime if you had the ability to connect with other beings in that time. And you as a, as a person actually had access to space stations and spaceships that were coming and going off of earth. So there was an awareness to you of Mars and Venus and the other planetary systems here and actually the beings coming and going to and from earth at that time. Uh, I asked if you uh, were involved with any of the disputes and the wars at that time and there was a no in that you really came to just kind of be here in that lifetime and hold a status but you didn't get too involved with anything and at the end of this particular lifetime so you actually at this point I did ask um, uh, at what level were you either service to self or service to others within that lifetime? And it was 70% service to others. So there was an aspect of you that was just living life and kind of having an experience here. Let me see what earth is like, what what's going on there. Um, but predominantly you in that lifetime were service to others. So you were upholding universal divine law within that lifetime. Before your body died, I asked how long you lived here, and you did not die here. You um, chose at a particular time that you were just done here, and you left on one of the spaceships, and you chose to actually go to the Draco system, and from 5D here in that lifetime, you went to the Draco system and merged between 5th dimension and 6th dimension 
up in there. So the Draco system is also where the high benevolent uh, dragon realm dragon beings are also birthed from there. So within uh, kind of the dragon lineages, that is all, that is in many of the dragon lineages considered actually the birthplace. Mm -hmm is in the Draco system there. So that is where you went after that. You've had three lifetimes here on Earth, counting this one. Now, what was the other one like? I will, I will tell you right now. Um, oh, there's some, actually some other stuff I want to share. There's so many cool things in here. <laughs> so... From this female life in, that would have been in India, you decided to incarnate again 2,400 years ago. And in between that time, you had kind of ascended and went to the Draco system and you were spending time there with, uh, with energy, with connections to Orion, connections to the councils, and also connections with the dragon realms and the blueprinters and the creators. So again, the architects of the universe. So working there. The n next lifetime you chose... Is, is that really why I can like be here, but instantaneously be with the council, instantaneously be with the dragons, instantaneously be with the starship? Instant seriously? Is, and can't most people do that? Not with the ease that you do it. Because I can be there like within milliseconds. And I think sometimes you do it so quickly that when you try to share how to do that with others, that there's almost a, a feeling in you of like, don't you get it? <laughs> it's just like this. It's, it's, just you just it's, do it. <laughs> it's a, no, it's a knowing. Yeah. It's not a. It's not even a thought. It's just you know, uh, something you know. And I do make the mistake that I think that other people know that. This is very yeah. special here in the sense that what your soul really wanted you to see in this lifetime is that you've never been disconnected. Now, when I share the next lifetime, you're going to kind of feel, I think, where you really decided to jump in. Mm -hmm. So... Let me backtrack one moment just because you brought that up because that's really amazing. Um, when you decided to actually start incarnating in as the blue, a or not blue avian, uh, the rainbow colored, but as the avian beings in the ninth dimension, really why you chose to come in, uh, if you want to look at the time in history, is that that was around the time of what was called the Electric Wars. Now, the Electric Wars were a time when a lot of the races in the cosmos were starting to have um, true battles with each other, fighting over planetary systems, resources, and land. And there were specific, what you would call Elohai Elohim and angelic races, and a multitude. There was actually many different races, what you might call angelic uh, beings who had started creating what we would look at as, as the human form, the human body. Now there was multiple seedings of the human species. The Terranusium project was something that they were really proud of and really wanting to take care of. And this body was very unique because it was able to hold the genetics of many different species or races, if you will, so that they not only could be a part of kind of a joined, a joined being, but also this being, this body of the human angelic form would have the ability to heal karmic lines for all the races that were connected to it. Now, when these wars started happening, now this was primarily happening on second harmonic universe of Earth, so what you might call Tara. But what was happening was now the wars in Orion were starting to want to come and take over Earth. And so now it was creating uh, digression and, and um, 
when you think of digression within a race, now it's it's deteriorating and also causing problems with the genetics. So when a race becomes digressive, they can actually become like a cancer mm -hmm. in the universe. So now something that could have been really good now could actually spread disease if you want to look at it that way. Um, and so in the higher universe where you were, before you decided to come into physicality, you were actually part of what were these guardian beings who started to get involved. You started going like, whoa, stuff isn't going so well. We need to pay more attention. But you were not 100% for saving the human Terranusium project. You actually uh, wanted to or were in favor of clearing the slate so that it wouldn't spread out to the universe in order to harmonize it. So now think, of, I want you to think of it, it wasn't like wiping out every species in the universe. It was a very specific group that was on earth. And part of this was to not let it spread out to the rest of the universe. Now, a lot of other invested races, so beings from Sirius, the Pleiades, from Lyra, were all actually vying to save this project, save the Terranusium, the humans. So you were part of the group that created a treaty with them, if you will, that said, well, if this is going to work, then this is how it's going to do it. And that's when you started to actually incarnate into physicality to be more hands-on and in part of how this was going to go in order to help rehabilitate. Now, the reason why is because you were very involved with not only protecting what is called the Halls of Amenti. Now, the Halls of Amenti are sacred natural portals that were on the earth that helped anyone on the planet ascend so you could come into 3D or it wasn't ever really 3D at that time, but you could come into 5D and then you could actually move back up into Ascension. When the battles were happening, the Orion, negative Orion factions wanted to take over all of these stargates throughout the planet, throughout not only the planet, but the universe. Because if they could stronghold these different stargates then they would have control of who comes in and out and then they would own the land they would own the planet they would own the people they would own the resources so there was a huge kind of <gasps> worry if earth got taken over so you were involved with helping to protect that energy uh, you worked and supported the races that were creating not only the different angelic treaties to help protect the universe, but also um, I asked if you were connected with the CDT plates, which is the Cloister Doratora plates, which are the crystalline plates that hold the information of the universe on them, the sacred mechanics, if you will, mm -hmm. of the universe. And you did not work on them directly, but you really worked with supporting the races and the beings that were working on those. So you were kind of at another level with those beings, but you were kind of monitoring them, saying this is what needs to be upheld in order for this to happen. So those were the initial kind of lifetimes you came into before you started going into the Orion lifetimes so i wanted to kind of tie that tie that in there that you have such a dedication for preserving the life body of the universe that from the gestalt level of consciousness that you came from that there almost isn't a species that's worth destroying it right mm -hmm. but then there was an agreement that was made to go ahead and let's see how it goes can we step in and can they make it right again and you chose at that time to go in deeper to be a part of that change now with that here's where you really decided to take on some of some of that pain 
you chose to come in again as a female 2,400 years ago. You came in in that lifetime into the Atlantic area and even kind of around the Mesopotamia area. So at that time, you chose to come in fully and completely in your first lifetime all the way dropped into third density. You chose to come in for the first time uh, clean slated with no resources and no memories of who you were prior to that. So you chose to fully jump into the pot in that lifetime. You came in to start working with ancestral karma at that time and at the core of the deepest levels that you did that work through relationships. So when you were in that lifetime, you were very much uh, more of an innocent, I don't know kind of woman, but also in that lifetime, you were dominated. You were not felt to be as though you were worth anything. You really took on the pain of what it would be to fully feel the discord of what the universe was going through the separation of the sacred ma masculine and feminine. So part of the largest pain in the Orion system is the distortion between the divine masculine and the divine feminine. And if we can come back to the remembrance that the Orion system and the Orion Nebula specifically is like the heart. It's like the breaking of the heart and the splitting of that, that union, that sacred union within there. So within that lifetime, you came in with uh, male dominance in your life, uh, having to just play the female role. At that time in history, women weren't allotted you know, rights to very many things. They were, they had their place, they had their position, what they were meant to do. And so within that, you really integrated with the world and not allowing yourself to have a connection to your off-planetary family. You played the role in that lifetime of the domesticated person and the nurturer. So when I asked more about that, um, it was just really, you just played the role of the subservient woman in that lifetime that didn't have a voice, that didn't really have the rights within that lifetime, but there was almost a level of being the fool or the innocent and not understanding everything that was going on. And what I asked is why you chose to do that. And it was more that you chose to take on a body just to start to pick up the karma so that you could move it, so you could understand it, honestly. Now, when I asked what chakra was most affected by that lifetime, it was the higher heart and the thymus, which I thought was really synchronistic because when you look at the 12 tree grid, Orion is the heart and the thymus. It's the eighth chakra, which is right above your heart, is called your higher heart. So it showed that that was really kind of the place that you were coming. It was the chakra and energy that was affected in your body. And at the same time, it was signifying the wounds and the pains that you were holding that you wanted to heal from the Orion system too, that was infiltrating into humanity. Now, your lifetime here has always been about healing the universe. And after that lifetime, you chose to be you. Hello. <laughs> so when I started to ask some questions about this lifetime, that the predominant energy within this life is still about working out the heart wound. And that the way that you've been working out this heart wound showed up as with partners, such as a wife, um, your relationships, but more like your intimate relationships, so lovers in your life, have been the predominant way that you have chosen to heal the heart wound in this lifetime. That you have cleared about 80% of that. I asked how much of that heart wound have you healed already by this 
point in your incarnation, it was 80%. So that's amazing. Um, that you are holding within your energy field. I asked predominantly what frequency or currency you are holding at this point in your life is love that you have gotten to a place within this incarnation. And I'm, I'm saying it this way because there's a couple things I'm gonna point out here that's gonna show that when you were younger, that wasn't the case. You did have to go through quite a few challenges to get to this moment. But at this current moment, let's start with, it's really amazing that you have already anchored yourself to a resonance with love, that you've about 80% cleared the majority of what you came here to heal and clear in this lifetime. I asked if you were intending to come back to earth after this lifetime and the answer was no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are intending to head back to the Orion system near the nebula. And after this lifetime, you are actually going to move to 12th dimension. So per, again, you incarnated originally at 90 and then you went to 8D for most of the time. You did kind of tinker around a little bit in 5D and then decided to really jump into it the last lifetime with 3D. But here's, here's a couple things that I think are really powerful for you to look at just as far as what you chose in this lifetime. You chose the human design of a reflector in this lifetime. And a reflector is 1% of the population if even. And that means that you didn't come here to really jump into this world. I would say the last lifetime that you did, you kind of jumped in to kind of get the cooties on you, so to speak. <laughs> it was kind of how you showed it. It was just like, I just need to absorb it in so I get it. And even though you didn't choose that in this lifetime, your childhood was predominantly you having to physically work it out of your body. What that means is that every time you bump your toe, every time you bang your head, every time you hurt yourself, every time that you go through something but come out stronger, you were working it out of your cellular memories and cellular tissues. And the way I can say that is because you are vibrating at the resonant frequency of love. If you hadn't worked that out, the amount of stuff you were holding, you'd be angry, you'd be bitter, you'd be pissed, you'd be lower frequencies, right? Yeah. So that's your signal to show you that you have really transcended what you wanted to come here and do. With that, you can look at all of the situations that you went through in your childhood one of the things I wanted to show you, even just within your chart here, is that your son is within the last minutes of Pisces before it would step into Aries. This is also showing that your son is, is kind of your signature in your incarnation in this life, but you're barely dipped a toe in here. <laughs> you're already ready to jump out the gate. You're holding within you all of the water signs because it's in the third deacon. You get to hold the energy of Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio within you, which makes you able to feel humanity on a deeper level. This ties in with you being a reflector. That as a reflector, you didn't come here to learn lessons through your open centers like other designs and types do when they have an open center. Instead, you are completely another species, if you will, that you've actually come to be a shining light or a mirror to other people to reflect the harmony, or the health or the vitality. So this is also fun because this is just coming to me right now. But a reflector's job in this life, if you will, is to be like a barometer or a gauge to the household, to a relationship, to a town, a country, wherever whether or not it's vital and healthy and in harmony. So if the homeostasis of the body is vital living life energy. So if a household is happy, a reflector is going to be happy. But if someone in the house has something out of alignment, the reflector is going to reflect that back. Now, if you actually kind of go back to your entire purpose for kind of being an incarnation in the first place, it was about restoring 
health and vitality back to the body of the universe. And now you're at a place in your life where you are reflecting it back. You are being that guide and that teacher to other people of, look, this is what needs to heal. But at the same time, I will tell you your challenge in this lifetime because your sun is squared not only to your emotions and your, your moon, but it's also square your nodes. So it's square kind of where your direction is going. Um, is that your kind of biggest challenge in this life is to make sure that you are not letting your emotions, all these water signs, keep you from saying what you need to say or doing what you need to do. Now, how this shows up is you have a tendency, just looking at your chart, to not want to hurt someone's feelings or to go out of your way to help someone that you're very close to, even if you know at a core level that you wouldn't be doing that for someone else because they need to stand up and they need to do something on their own. And so your kind of your Achilles heel in this lifetime has been to make sure that you are not getting pulled in to emotionally distorting what you know on a cosmic level would be correct for the health and vitality of the universe. So making someone responsible for what they need to do, saying what you need to say, not having to sugarcoat things, but also not having to blurt them out and be harsh with your words. That there's there doesn't need to be an oversensitivity or overreactivity to any of the ways you deliver anything, but instead to just know that this is a lifetime and that even though a lot of people in humanity don't realize that there's many lifetimes and they might feel hurt emotionally because we think we have to fit roles in this lifetime. That your job is to find the way to say things from your heart, let your heart heal, that you aren't abandoning someone or you're not letting someone down by not going over and above for them. So this is just a, a key thing that showed up in here as to making sure that you're not um, washing your energy at the ex expense of other people because they aren't stepping up with their own emotional maturity. Okay. Um, do you have any questions so far? No, I've been sitting here asking truth the whole time and everything rings true so far, so. So this is just, um, Kind of if I was just to, to recap in here, I did want to touch on the Orion beings a little bit. I thought this was really special. Uh, there's many, many, many different races in the Orion system. Um, so I can see why you chose to be there to really be able to connect with so many different races and beings and have a greater influence. But it's also a really beautiful place that it was this document was actually talking about how Ryan star seeds started really coming to earth during the sixties to nineties to help others pave the way, especially for many of the young people and the young souls on the planet. And I thought that was really special because you, um, you have such a unique way that you work with children that you can connect with them in a way that I've never seen anybody else do. So I thought that was beautiful that the Orion light seed or star seeds, very compassionate activists, inspiring entrepreneurs. So it's not that you're motivated by money, but you're just really good at making things happen. Very resourceful, um, able to kind of make it through any challenging situations and also able to recycle, invent, improvise, research and do all kinds of things, logical and task focused. Um, so really able to excel at places where the mind has to come in, very discerning. So therefore, there's an ability to really recognize dark forces and deceiving people, toxic people. The only Achilles heel for you would have been uh, relationships because that's where you were choosing to heal the heart space in this lifetime. Um, 
very much wisdom seeking. Um, definitely, it says here opinionated. So basically just meaning that when you have your beliefs and you know, there's just a sense of knowing within you. So you go for it. Um, and uh, even though uh, you have a great ability with logic, that that can sometimes be what gets you in hot water in relationships. <laughs> But the very um, beautiful thing I saw over here is not only there is on another side there's sensitivity, in, independence, harmonious, um, humorous, funny. But one thing that really stood out was vivid blue eyes, like striking, like some of um, have very blue eyes. You know, there can be others with uh, different eye colors and brown hair, but that is something that's that's a trait. And when I look at your eyes, your eyes always just kind of draw me in they're really amazing so i just thought that really stood out as well and that you're here to really help assist assist other star seeds whether you do it through activation or helping other people remember who they are that i feel as a reflector you came here to really just help people become more discerning with themselves become more responsible for how they are utilizing their emotions and what they are creating on the earth and that we all need to step up. That you didn't come here to do the work for anybody. You came fully for yourself to kind of heal a place within your heart, a place within the heart of the universe. And that at the end of this incarnation, that there is a great pull for you to actually return back to the Orion system, but at even a higher dimension or frequency. So. And there you go. That's just... A little bit of what we pulled out of some of your chart information. I will say though that you do have a huge connection uh, to beings in Altair uh, that have been, they're kind of like their service to others. So they're very benevolent race and beings. There's again, it's another place. Yeah, but remember Altair is where we used to travel. So we used to go to the copper rod in the middle of Altair. I remember did not remember that no enough. remember we used to go uh I, I i i i've never heard that word before and and we would go to altair and we would the giant copper rod and all of the children all of the thousands of children and then the um uh the elder that was there to guide the children uh he would always come over and and hug all of us um and within altair we used to s step into the copper uh, rod and get uploads and, and downloads and all kinds of crazy cool stuff. That's so amazing. Well, they're one of your primary oh, yeah. guardians. They're at the sixth dimensional level. Um, so, yeah, and they have a great understanding of the polarity. So, I just thought I'd point that out because I was looking on here. They're connected with your Chiron, your Uranus. Uh, not only your north node and your south node, and these are just significant places that it was showing that they were really helping, and also your Jupiter, where they were really helping with um, being available, honestly, if you just want to tap in and need to ask questions, yeah. need some guidance or advice, that they're really helping in this lifetime. Well, I think they're the ones that keep telling me to duck. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, thank you for letting me share this with you. This was like, I had such an incredible time just looking at your chart because there's so much high vibration to it. It was very exciting to learn some of the history of the universe just through looking at your chart. Well, thank you very much. It's very cool. Um, great. <laughs> It, it, it's crazy on it's crazy to look at the journeys that we've taken and the different places we've been and then how that all ties the journey work into this reality because all of those places all of those things I mean we we go all the time I mean I'm there all the time and I've never heard of those places. You know, you almost think you're kind of crazy because you're flying around with dragons. <laughs> um, it's very cool. Thank you so much. Thank really you. Cool. It makes you feel a little less crazy. <laughs>